In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Welcome to In the Tunnel, episode number 106. Yeah, so we want to talk about a few NHL things today. Yeah, some fictitious, some real. Um, yeah. This one has been kind of in the works for a while. It took a long time uh, to create the graphics. I actually archived it for a little bit, but because... Um, it's what we do. We we do a little fictitious. We do a little nonfiction. Right. Uh, this this one a little fictitious. It comes to us uh, consensually uh, through a Twitter account that was created, uh, a bot account uh, called the NHL Draft Bot or NHL Draft Bot, I should say. Uh, Sean, if you would be kind enough to just uh, give the username that's in there. Of the person who created it, I believe the handle is on there. Yeah, R Y B R Z. Yeah. So, can you just repeat that one more time for me? R Y B R Z. All right. So at R Y B R Z, uh, I DM'd him in the fall. I said, "Hey, man, we, me and a buddy, we do a podcast. Um, your your page is really funny, just uh, you know, because of the random chance that it is." Um, and what it is, it takes NHL teams, it takes assigned values from a list, and then it just randomly says, with this pick in the draft, uh, like, the Penguins have selected and then a fictitious character. So I said, hey, man, uh, I'd love to do, like, a full actual draft and play it out. Would you be all right with me taking some of the stuff that you've posted through this? And he said, absolutely. Uh, so... Now here we go. We we have a little bit of a uh, a actual draft that's been put together. Right. So, so I mean, yeah. So we went through. I think all the teams. We chose a few. Um. And so you want to just go through a few of them? Yeah. I mean, look. Uh, we'll, we'll. I'll go through all of them. Um. Maybe not in the most depth that I can. But uh, let me pull it up on my computer here so that I have the entirety of what I need to see here. So we're going to start out in the Metro. And um, just a little bit of a preamble here. I did uh, kind of every team got a pick in the first few rounds. And then I played it out kind of like a real NHL draft where... First round picks more valuable, less trades, and then as it went on, I just swapped picks every now and then. So some, you know, I didn't assign a number round pick to any of these on the graphic, but um, th there are some teams that have more picks than others. Right. Um, so notably of the Carolina Hurricanes, Billy Joel was selected, um, and it. If you wouldn't mind here, Sean, if you would go through some of these, I'm going to see if I can pull up my right. file. So, here. like, yeah, we have uh, Billy Joel selected by the Hurricanes, right? Uh, notable for the Blue Jackets, we have Santa Claus. Uh, yeah, I, like, uh, and uh, the Hurricanes, why don't we just do team by team, actually, right? So, yeah, absolutely. Like, so we have yeah. Billy Joel first, right? Mm -hmm. Uh on the list, and then we have the Kool Aid Man, mm -hmm. Beast Boy, Beavis. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to say the next one. Yeah, we'll we'll go through these because Puhatu is one of the Bionicles, right? So and if you're a Lego fan, Rick Grimes. Rick Grimes is a character from The Walking Dead. Would so, know. Yeah, so no, there's going to be ones here that we don't know. And I will say, number one overall pick here, I, it was kind of ironic 
the Staten Island native Joe Gatto goes to the uh, New York Islanders, right. the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. uh, they also were able to graft Han Solo, Luigi, Auto Rocket, Dora the Explorer, Chick Hicks, which I'm not sure what that is. Let's find out. That is one of the uh, one of the cars from the movie Cars. Oh. Um, and then they finished off with Brian Boitano, the figure skater. Right. So, uh, I mean, Dora the Explorer is going to take a while to to be in the minors before possibly ever coming up. I like the word play there. <laughs> She's going to be in the minors. <laughs> also, maybe climate, you know, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, climate. Translation to ice may be a little bit difficult there. Right. She's all, often in a beach landscape, so, you know, th I this mean, could be... You got Han Solo also uh, in space with a freaking uh, space cruiser or whatever. Yeah, so the, the real question here when we go through these is... Who's your center? Who's your top player? Who's your goaltender? And I look at this and I'm like, maybe the guy from Cars is the best goaltender. Yeah. Because statistically speaking, we're talking about a guy who literally can cover a 10 by 6 object. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, for Columbus, maybe their goaltender, the man Santa Claus. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be hard for Luka Doncic to move goalpost to goalpost, but they do have Donald Duck, uh, and then they have the famous Pokemon Muck. Yeah. Uh, Hannah Montana, I don't know, maybe a winger. I, I, it doesn't strike me as someone who actually plays along the boards very well. Yeah, but okay, um, back to the Islanders, though. Who do you think their like, center and wingers are? I, I don't know. I, I think like Luigi has like a, a good shot. One of those. I think Luigi or Auto Rocket. If we're talking rocket power, we're talking athleticism, and we're talking, if I'm correct here, the cast of Rocket Power did play street hockey. So yeah. maybe the next Bo Bennett. Ah. The I don't California know if you want to be that, native, though. But it is the California native that really just did not play ice hockey. Right. Um, right. Um, let's cover the Devils here, Sean. All right. So we have Woody. Velma, Young Sheldon, what, the whole of One Direction, Sal yeah. Volcano, Volcano, uh -huh. uh, Freddy Krueger, Michelangelo, Lisa Simpson, and Kevin Weeks. Now, I will say, Lisa Simpson, probably a good candidate to transition over to GM. Ah. <laughs> uh, Probably not very. No, she's one of those like the backup quarterback who's like he's really good at being the the sideline coach, but once you put him in the game, I don't know. You do have your your version of Tom Wilson and Freddy Krueger that's yeah. going to be interesting. Uh and then you have Kevin Weeks. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. He did play for the Devils, didn't he? Yeah, I think I think so. All right, uh, let's find out here. Did he played for a New York team, at least. He did play for the Devils. So he was a goaltender at the end of his career with the Devils. Um, probably good in the room, just because, you know, locker room presence as a media guy. Um, I, I, I've seen how it goes with Sal Valcano in net, having watched him practical jokers. That That's not going to be a fit. Um Although, you know, there's not a lot of size here outside of Freddy Krueger for anywhere in this lineup. Uh, yeah. I guess you have One Direction as a good chemistry line, but you do have the combination of Woody being a toy figure, Velma and young Sheldon kind of being maybe too young of a, of a core otherwise. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I don't know. This one doesn't really strike fear into the hearts of many. Right. Uh, all right. How about we look at the Rangers? So we have yeah, so. Jack Black, Chicken Little, mm -hmm. Maggie Simpson, Disco Stu, and Johnny Test. Right. So Disco Stu, if I remember correctly, was another Simpsons character. Yes. Yes. Uh, Johnny Test. Uh, look, they're, unfortunately here, the league as a whole is going to get very much young mm -hmm. because there's a lot of cartoon presence here. 
Um, Maggie Simpson, I I feel like Jack Black's your goalie just because nobody else has really nobody else any, has any size. Any size. Um, Chicken Little could surprise you with some finesse moves. I, I feel like you know the the agility of a small chicken. Um, but uh, there's not much going on here. I think you you have to add via free agency. Uh, I do think Jack Black is by far kind of like in the real life New York Rangers. The best player is in net. Yeah, fair. So, um, yeah, let's move on. The Rangers didn't have a lot uh, of ads here. So we're going to go on to the Flyers, who their first round pick was a jar of Hellman's Mannings, which is interesting. But I think I think Sean and I agreed here where. We were going to screw the Flyers with whatever pick they got first anyway. Yeah. Uh, So then they added a supplemental piece in Kermit the Frog. They got Buzz Lightyear. Uh, Joe Swanson, which, again, uh, you know, we had to screw Philly here. Um, (laughs) So pardon the handicapped community. This is not a dig, but it's kind of hard to play ice hockey on wheels. Um, We got to strip some skis to that... uh... To that to those wheels we can add skis all you want that's not going to help in the all, along the boards <laughs> yeah um, potty the parrot which i believe is the parrot from spongebob uh captain haddock and then sean mendez for your top 40 hit um so i don't know here like i feel like how good the goaltender is depends on the size of the jar of man <laughs> Because if we're going straight from the manufacturer here, we can fill a whole net. Um, <laughs> now, mayonnaise doesn't have the uh, thickest density, so it is thick in density, but a, a puck could definitely cross the line off of Yeah, but if it's a mile. jar of mayonnaise, like, what type of jar are we talking about here? Well, we're talking Hellman, so we're talking big in the base we're not talking uh oval we're not talking peanut butter jar shape we're talking no no, no but we're talking like the standard crappy plastic jar I-, I believe so i believe so uh but i think that it- it's kind of hard to tell because we are talking name brand here. we're not True. talking store brand we're not talking squeezable we're talking jar <laughs> So I, I don't know. This one this one's interesting. Uh Kermit the Frog, I, I feel like too honest of a of a team player. Like Buzz yes, Lightyear. He'll, he'll get you stats, but Kermit is Kermit is a role player. We know what happens when Miss Piggy's in the area. Yeah. True. Buzz Lightyear, good for flying around, uh your regular uh Brandon Tanev type. Uh but will he put pucks in net? Joe Swanson, I mean, it's going to be hard for him to get on the ice for shifts. Let's just say what it is. Once he's off the ice and back on the bench, mobility is going to be tough to get back on there. Yeah. Uh, the parrot, the parrot captain line has potential just because thievery. But if it's paired with Sean Mendez at the same time, I, I just don't know that that's the right culture fit. True. So. Uh, I, I'm I'm wary of this. I think it has potential, but you got to play the pieces correct. Right. So how about we go to the Penguins next? Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't happy with a Walter White first round pick. That's not the best PR uh, beginning to this. Um, True. We got uh, the the bigger brother of uh, iCarly and Spencer Shea. Uh, we got Chris Griffin in net because I think you have to. Um, yeah, we got President Scroob from um, Spaceballs, uh, which uh, you know Mel Brooks is my guy, so yeah, I'm more than fine with that. A little bit devious, but then again, could play very well with Walter White. Um, I'm not exactly sure who Isaac the Eye of Oculate is, <laughs> um, and then we have Nosferatu again, a little bit devious, and then uh, you know it's good because with all these guys who are experimenting with drugs and paraphernalia we have the first ever doctor um so we'll we'll be fine the penguins are no stranger to man games lost um it's it's in fact in reality where they find themselves a lot so you know 
this guy, he, he can work for one of the local uh, companies here and get paid a third of what he should. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't see this really detracting from reality too much. I feel like it, it's controversial in itself, but then again, so is giving six-year deals to three 30-plus-year-old players. So, you know, business as usual. All right, and on to the Capitals. So we have the Undertaker. Uh, and again, a Tom Wilson build here. The Undertaker, the wrestler. Yeah. Uh, Inkling Girl? Uh, right, let's find out who that is. Inkling Girl. Because I, I feel like we have to clarify that. That is from the Splatoon anime. Ah. I get, oh, no, it's a Nintendo character. My yep. apologies. Uh, um, then alloy? we have Alloy, alloy? who is a saint, a fictional uh, character in the form of a saint. We have Greg Wyshynski, Greg Wyshynski. and that is some kitten, a cute kitten, and Weird Al. You get, you get a cute kitten to combat the fact that you have an, a wrestler on there. We can't give you too much here. Uh, Greg Wyshynski is a radio personality. Um... He is a a a, a hockey based radio yeah, personality. Yeah, so he he can commentate your games. He should pretty much transition out of the sport, though. Yes, but he shouldn't comment your commentate your games. He resigned from Yahoo Sports, um, and he's now with ESPN. Um, so yeah, he um he also has some ties to some videos featuring John Scott's All Star Game. So that can't go well. Um. Yeah, Weird Al Yankovic finishes us off, and I, I don't know what you want to make of this. This 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 team's all talk, um, literally and figuratively. Um, a, a kitten is not going to strike fear into the hearts of many, but then again, neither were the Capitals in the second round for many years. So, well, you know, uh, what what's new there? Yeah, so uh, on to the Atlantic with the Boston Bruins. Also, I will say I like how easy it is to like make jokes about this. Like, there we have no notes here between both of us. Yeah, it's just flowing how easy this is. Yeah. So they start with Howard Wallowitz of the Big Bang Theory, which is nice. You always want to start your franchise with a short Jewish man. <laughs> Uh, normally, in the sense of you want to start a franchise with somebody who actually has financial stability and can build a franchise. Not so much here. We're actually building out the team's players. Yeah. Uh, we have Phil Swift, which, if I recall correctly, is one of your TV infomercial sellers. He's the flex tape guy. Um, so right. uh, really good in a boat, not so much on the ice. Right. Uh, we have Timmy Turner's mom from Fairly Odd Parents. Great. Uh, uh, we have Raf We have Raphael of the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Lone uh, Star, again of Spaceballs fame. Yeah. Um, really good with a helmet, which is not going to be a big transition onto the ice. The only issue may be the size of the helmet, but hey, maybe he plays goaltender and it doesn't matter. Right. Um, we have Bubble Bass, um, which if I that is of SpongeBob fame and right uh, of showing belly button fame. Apparently, <laughs> uh, we have Mermaid Man, also of SpongeBob fame, and then we finish it off with two uh, more physical characters in Roman Reigns and of Bart the Simpson. WWE. Yeah, and then Bart Simpson. Um, so I mean, this this is Bruins hockey. It's all physical. Um, it doesn't start the way you want it to, but it certainly ends that way. You have Raphael. Uh, you have you do have a superhero in theory in Mermaid Man. I don't know what you want to make of that, um, <laughs> but there's not a lot of. I feel like you can't expect a lot of productivity here because right. you have a, a TV salesman. Um, you have Bart Simpson. And I mean, Howard Wallowitz is smart as a guy as they come, but athletically inclined, probably not. So I'm not sure that this is Broad Street or not. That's Philly, 
that's Broad Street Bullies off. But I'm not sure this is Bean Town hockey. So <laughs> nope. Yeah. Uh, on to the Sabers, which they solve all of their financial woes if they money. have any with yeah. Mr. Beast, I guess. Yes. Followed yeah, by Mr. Beast is not going to score a lot of goals by himself. But he has the financial fortitude to offer any goaltender thirty thousand dollars on the spot to let him shoot one in, <laughs> and that's going to be tempting because it's the NHL and it doesn't bring in as much revenue as other leagues. You know, a good, a, who knows? A backup goaltender doesn't make anywhere near the money of a solidified number one. Thirty grand is not nothing, <laughs> right? Followed by bad piggy. Uh, yeah, uh, bad piggy being of uh, your uh, uh, Angry Birds fame, right? Easy to knock over, but then again, a lot of players from the Sabers have been. Um, you have Don Cheadle, which I mean, if there's a, ever been a locker room guy, a guy who was built to be a um, a, a head coach, probably Don Cheadle. But then you have to be a leader in a room that includes Timmy Turner, Timmy Turner. and Baby Mario. Yeah. And, we, we, you know, you have Timmy Turner without the fairly odd parents here. We're talking just a, a superhero without his powers. Right. So, I mean, it, it's going to be tough. Baby Mario doesn't make things easier. Um, so but, I mean, I don't think Baby Mario makes things much harder. I, you know, I, I'm not sure it makes things much harder either. Uh, it's just, I, again, this draft lends itself to a lot of players with speed out of the animated and video game world. Right. Not so much, you know, when you were talking actual real, you know, or TV personality characters. Um so it, it we're we're getting from pools of both areas. We're not so much getting well-rounded hockey players. Maybe there will be one or two, but I'm not really sure. Okay, on to the Red Wings, starting off with Dwight Schrute. Yeah, so Dwight Schrute, um, hardest working player in the league, or at least in the East. Uh, you know, incredibly valuable work ethic. But it doesn't go noticed very well. So this guy is built for the third line, uh, right. maybe second line potential. But you know he's a thirty goal scorer who will never be an all star. Mm -hmm. um, you have Wallace um, of Wallace and Gromit. Um, just I mean, I, this guy is not built to withstand any kind of physicality at all. Right. He, he's a big lanky guy no uh real uh meat to him but then you have rick harrison and you know a pawn star as well as i do can find a good deal um so maybe rick harrison he he knows sports valuations he knows memorabilia uh maybe he's a, a good distraction on the ice so he's a good chirper if you will um yeah then you have uh the face off circle saying that his that this fourth line center's jersey is worth about twenty five bucks. Then you have Rajesh, Rajesh Kothrapali. Yep, of Big Bang Theory. Um, I think again we're gonna have some trouble with that one. Um, <laughs> brains over brawn. Right. But then you have Muscle Man. There's your brawn. And, yeah, Muscle Man. Uh, the good complimentary piece. They're a package deal in theory. And then not only do you get the complimentary piece, you get a late round steal in Lionel Messi. And soccer and hockey, they, they kind of tend to blend in terms of how the game is played. Yeah, yeah, you know, but he runs on his score. feet. Can he balance on his skates? I don't know. I don't know. If you can deke, you can skate in theory. I mean, I can't buy bad knees. Um, so I don't know. I trust Messi to do it better than anybody else. Um and then we have Richard Hammond. He's an English journalist um, for the BBC. Um, that's that's not going to come in great. But, you know, a lot of great play-by-play -play commentators are born from 
a relatively unknown playing career, so we never know there. Um, and then we finish with Kent Brockman, uh, another Simpsons character. Uh, this guy is already built for the booth as well, so maybe we have a tandem in the works here, but we don't have a lot of playing you career. You did here. skip over the Pac-Man. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, eating the competition, I guess, in theory. I'm not exactly... See, Pac-Man on skate is a, a, a conundrum in itself, because Pac-Man doesn't have legs, as far as I know. I mean, right. it really depends on the version of Pac-Man that you're getting here. We're talking right. old arcade, there is no legs. But then for talking uh, as the years went on, we are talking legs. And that in itself is a real bugaboo. Um, right. All right. Now to the Florida Panthers. They start with, with Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Um. You know, Colonel Sanders, I, I don't know what you want to make of that one there. That one is good and bad. You know, you never know. He's a prankster in the other team's locker room, like Flurry. You know, he just leave a, a catered meal of KFC behind, and all of a sudden, everybody else in the Atlantic is sluggish. Uh, but is he as devious as Tony Soprano, who is also joining this team? Um, I'm not too sure. Soprano is a little bit more clear-cut with his intentions. Uh, I do think Colonel Sanders... You know, the spice of life, if you will. He, he can provide a lot, but we don't know if it's hockey-related. Right. And then we have Larry the Lobster. Uh, I think we just froze Rocket over pig. his standard habitat. Well, Larry the Lobster of SpongeBob, I think. Uh, we're talking the big muscular guy. Um, so, right. yeah, he has potential. But the problem is he's a lobster. We're talking short arms. We're talking limited wingspan. Right. We're talking about a guy that's going to have a lot of trouble with a puck that stays on the ground. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's more of an AHL affiliate kind of guy. But, you know, in the middle rounds, you, you can work with that. Um, then we have Olmec from the Nickelodeon show uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. Stonewall in net. I think you have to put this guy in goal. Mostly because, like I said, he he is made of stone. He's an eternal guardian, so you never have to worry about him retiring. But, you know, the fans may want something different at some point. Okay. You want to take the next one? Oh, well, we were on... Mario and Peter Pettigrew. I was going to let you take a turn. So oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, no. So, so now we have Mario, not the baby version, right? Not the so baby version. we're talking classic. Yeah, but the problem is, where are all his power ups, right? So right, no banana peels in this world. No banana peels. No bullet bill. No blue shell. Man, what is he going to do? All his power is gone. Uh, and then we finish off with Peter Pettigrew of Harry Potter. Hey, um, I mean, the Panthers can throw an actual rat on the ice, I guess. I guess that this is where you know a little <laughs> bit better than me. This guy is an eyesore to look at, though. He looks yeah. like he's been hit in the face with a few pucks. But I'm pretty sure the Panthers, like, have rats to throw on the ice when they win or something. I'm not... I, something like that. So there you go, an actual one. That's about as good as you're going to get. <laughs> All right, on to the Canadians. So they start off with Kodak Black. Um, we know Kodak's been to a hockey game before, not necessarily in the way of watching a hockey game, but rather being entertained by a woman at a hockey game. Um, not sure that skill set's going to translate to on the ice. Um, we're just happy that he seems to know his way around and around. Um, right. For the Canadians, that's probably not a good first pick, but um, it's not going to appeal to the good old Canadian crowd. But it, it's something to where it's probably going to sell tickets um, because it's going to turn out in a way that just nobody's going to anticipate other than Panthers. You, do, you think, do you think Elon Musk on your team would sell tickets? In Canada, yes. In America, no. Because 
what Elon Musk has done for the uh, economy is controversial in itself, but it's controversial mostly here. Um, it's a little bit different there, so we'll see. It, right, and then we've got Clash the Royal King, um, I guess, iOS phone game fame. So you, you know from that alone that this guy's a wash because right so plays these games um then we have shrek so are we of the opinion that shrek's gonna be the goalie i think leading candidate for sure okay uh, i think that um you you have him as a fortified defensive piece for sure mm. but i do think that you have an offensive piece in daffy duck and yes i know i'm skipping over uh fozzy bear but uh daffy duck if there's anybody who can navigate and deke it, it's him with that absolute high octane energy um fozzy bear I, i'm not sure i'm not sure that that guy actually will leave the initial face off circle he, he seems to be somebody who once comfortable in where he is will not navigate outside of that right uh i'm ag i'm agreeing to that all right so the senators then uh they have milhouse von houghton from uh, let's just go with milhouse from the milhouse Simpsons. uh um absolute punching bag to start off but then you have pikachu pikachu and, yeah i mean pikachu is good enough to I guess lock down some defensive support, and he has but some speed. But can he balance it with the ice? It's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. But we know he's a lightning rod, so um, yeah. uh, we we then complement that with Brian Griffin. Uh, Brian Griffin is going to be your guy who probably fucks up, takes a lot of penalties, then chirps the ref on the way to the box because yep. you know accountability not his forte. Uh, we have Biggie Cheese of uh, of Ratatouille fame, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, or no, from the Barnyard franchise. Um, so Biggie Cheese is a rat rapper. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know. It's based on the rapper Biggie Smalls, but Biggie Cheese, does he, ha does he have the ability to go top to you, so to speak? Can you... Can you get him to uh, shoot in the upper holes? Right. Uh, then we have Sora. Sora is from a, the Disney Kingdom Hearts video game series. Uh, does not appear to be a franchise piece, but then again, he does wield a key a lot, so maybe. Um, you know, maybe that's a wordplay thing. Um you know, and then the Senators, they, they did something different. They drafted you, the listener of this. So, yeah. Uh, let's hope your passport's ready, and let's know. Let's hope you know how to skate. And just remember, you're going to have to buy a lot of hockey sticks here, and a good hockey stick will cost you above $100. So get ready to spend about a grand on equipment. I mean, you hard. probably also need pads. Yeah, yeah. Gloves. You know, it, Gates. Your your budget here is going to be stupidly high. But, yeah, but you know the game in Canada want you, so uh, just be happy that somebody actually wants you more than <laughs> your current life support. Um, and just remember, you weren't the last pick that the Senators had either. They also took Brock, who's going to be an absolute lockdown guy in net. This guy is built like a brick. Uh, from the waist up, and when he's in the butterfly position, you, you can only imagine what he's capable of doing. Not to mention the fact he uh, he's the emperor's new groove guy. So like he, he, this guy has the ability to uh, to really work some magic here. Um, unfortunately, senators not the best drafters. They also took Grandpa Simpson. So for as good as they did with finding some talent in the middle rounds. They, they drafted basically Jim Rutherford now uh, to play for their team. And, and who knows, maybe Grandpa Simpson is Canadian at heart and this is a feel-good story, but 
Right, I but I want to I want to talk about the last one, right? They drafted Pepsi Man, right? So like, what are they expecting from Pepsi Man? Just like sugar and caffeine for the rest of their roster? I guess so. I mean, it's better than drafting Red Bull Man because at least with Pepsi, you know, they there's no real come down. It's just sugar. Um, but it, it's an interesting thing to have to examine. Okay. Yeah, because like it doesn't make sense. Like I don't know. I don't know how any of these are gonna pan out. You, the listener, are the only hope they have. You have the highest potential. You're not going to be in, in the NHL video game. I want to make that very clear. <laughs> um, and if you were, it, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to look because your rating would be so low that you would probably throw the game out. Um, right. Let's move on to Tampa Bay. Yeah, so let's. The, uh, these divisions are taking some time here. Yeah, so let's just go through. So we'll talk about the whole roster and then we'll go through some of them. So they started with Patchy the Pirate, uh, on to Superintendent Chalmers. Uh, Again, a good chirper. Uh, a Minecraft villager, hopefully it's not the nitwit. Uh, Principal Skinner from Edmonton. Uh, and Man Ray. Man Ray, again, from uh, Spongebob fame. You know, uh, there's a lot of talk here between a principal and uh, a superintendent. Um, but there's not a lot of skill here. There's not a lot to go around. Right, you're hoping that Minecraft villager has a good profession. You also have to take away the fact, like, for me personally, the fact that any team that has a bird on it is just basically a lost pick. Unless we're talking, like, medieval, or not medieval, but prehistoric times, and we're talking, like, dragon size, or we're talking, like, you know, a a bald eagle, for example, isn't going to be able to really do much in a in a ground game. Right. So, you know, it, it really stinks. Um, and now I re- actually realize now I'm reading Patchy the Pirate, not Patchy the Parrot. Yeah. Um, so that's on me, hand up. But uh, that, that will play into the theme later on. Right. All right. And the Maple Leafs, they had Mike Frances- Francesa. Nick Francesa, uh, sports Garfield. talk legend, going number one to a legend of a franchise, but then Garfield, yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. we, Rick Sanchez and Greg Kinnear. Followed by... We have Iron Man. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld and Slowpoke. Jerry Seinfeld, I mean, we, we've seen what Jerry Seinfeld can do with being a Mets fan and actually throwing a good first pitch. I wouldn't put athletic endeavors... Uh, um too far away from what Seinfeld can do. My only problem is, as a Jewish man, we have limitations when it comes to athletics. <laughs> um, Slowpoke, probably uh, best suited to be a goaltender. Yeah, I mean, he's psychic, like, he right? Over- like, stop everything in midair? The only problem is speed. Once he picks a side to shoot on, the other side is wide open. Okay, fair. So... I don't know. That one, um, uh, there are goaltenders who can be successful in that lens. It's just, will he be? Right. And so the Coyotes obviously have a lot of picks. Uh, they have Goofy, Plank, Psyduck, Troy Dan, Cosmo, Mrs. Puff, Raisin Brand's son, uh-huh. Robbie Rotten, and Anderson De La Rosa. Um... I don't know how much a sun is going to help you on ice. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're just going to need more equipment because they're in Arizona on ice fielding a sun. Yes, but if anybody's best suited for having to deal with the sun, it's the state of Arizona. Now, that being said, this sun comes with two scoops of fruit. Uh, We're talking the raisin brand guy. Um... Troy Dan is an absolute liability. The guy can barely understand basketball, and he's right. a two-pay streamer. Um, Anderson De La Rosa is an interesting last pick here because he no longer plays uh, in Major League Baseball, but he was a player for uh, about twelve years or for seventeen years. So I mean, never really long with an MLB team. But he's the best that they can have. Um, so, not to mention, it looks like he's he's a journeyman for sure. Um, Mrs. Puff, 
interestingly enough, mm -hmm. only getting bigger with rage. Classic goaltender, you have to think. Yeah, um, fair. Um, but you know, having a, a two by four on the on the forward lines is not going to help with plank. Nope. Uh, Psyduck again, great at anticipating, but mobility with that bottom heavy figure is going to be an issue. Yep. Uh, then it would be hilarious if we got canceled for body shaming a Pokemon. Uh, then for the Blackhawks, they started off with Dwayne the Rock Johnson, followed by okay. Penny from Spatter. Yeah, Big Bang Theory. R two D two. Uh, Frank Castell, Frank Castle, and Sporticus. All right, yeah. So, uh, Frank Castle, uh, is a comic book character, uh, from Punisher series. Looks to be Marvel comic. So, look, we we have Dwayne the Rock Johnson, we have R two D two, and we've got a Marvel superhero. But okay, so R two D two, what, what, like, what help is he gonna be? He's on the ice. He can't hack anything. But if there's anybody who's built to block a shot, it's a guy made of metal. Okay, fair, fair. Yeah, the software doesn't really mean anything here. I'll be honest with you. Um, but you know, he may be good for instant replays. They can use him as kind of a pylon cam. Um, Sporticus here is, um, if we look here, not really the most athletic person. Uh, he was an Icelandic children's television show actor, uh, or at least fictional character. You know, I think his knowledge of uh, sports in itself is going to be an asset. Uh, but the theme here that keeps redeveloping is, is it somebody who can actually do anything? Right. Well, we have a lot of boost act athletics here. We have somebody who knows their way around the game, but doesn't know how to play it very well. Yeah. Uh, all right, on to the Avalanche. That last long because we have Michael Jordan with the Avalanche. Yep. Uh, Jordan being, of course, the GOAT. But then we follow that up with Gibby of iCarly uh, and shirtless fame. We have Trevor Phillips, which uh, Trevor Phillips is an actor. Um, well, not really. He's a fictional character from Grand Theft Auto. Uh, but then again, you know, Nazem Kadri was good enough to or the uh, maroon, so why isn't this guy? Uh, we have Goku, and then we have Sterling Archer uh, to finish up, you know. So I, I see a lot of problem solving happening here. Uh, I see a lot of growth of Jordan. So I don't see a lot of actual completeness, though. I mean, they have athleticism in Goku, okay. and I guess that's it. <laughs> Michael Jordan, I, I think you have a, a photosystem. Fair. But, like, yeah, outside of that, I don't know. Alright. Uh, yeah. On to Dallas Stars. They start with Cranky Kong. Uh, go Next is Crimson Chin. Then Megan Parker, Alec Baldwin, Lemmy, and Gary Bedman. Yeah. So, I mean... Talk about I conflict of interest, first of all. Yeah, I was about to say the deck is, I guess, stacked a little bit in the favor of Dallas to start yeah. the year. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Um, Alec Baldwin strikes me as a guy who can do anything because his his versatility in roles and, uh, you know, he, he, he brings the heat, he brings entertainment value, but... As good as he is in a lot of areas, he's never really truly great in one area. Right. Uh, Cranky Kong, just an absolute liability. I have no idea why you would take that guy with your first pick. Um, but, you know, maybe it's uh, a compensation for what later happened with the choice of Gary Beck. Yeah, fair. Uh, all right, on to the Wild. They started with Sonic the Hedgehog, so going for a little bit of athleticism, even yeah, though the guy the just scorer here. But the guy just rolls around normally, right? Yes, but he rolls around at a speed that the defense can't keep up with. Yeah, but what is he um, what is he doing on a surface with no traction? Now, you know, 
if he spins where there is traction, why can't he spin where there isn't traction? It's Fair. not that he's trying to walk, he's trying to spin. Um, okay. Then they go with Sasha Bar uh, Baron Cohen. Uh, is that Wayne Gretzky? Wayne Glensky, Glensky. The, uh, This guy is uh, an Oilers fan and a fake hockey player uh, who is very big, I guess, in the video game community. Um, so that's, again, we have, we have a joystick player, not so much a hockey stick player. Right. Uh, then they have Ricky LaFleur, Shaggy, Tenacious D, Dustin Henderson, Naruto, Birdo, and Coconut Head. So, I mean, we have one of the trailer park boys here in Ricky LaFleur. That, that's a steal in itself. We're talking a can Canadian-based show. We're talking a guy with grit, but, you know, grit can only get you so far when you, you have Wayne Glensky on your line. Uh, Tenacious D is an interesting poll because we're, we have to break up the group. Jack Black is already with the Rangers. Right. Uh, Dustin Henderson, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what to make of that one here. Uh, he's in Stranger Things, which, I mean, I guess the sky's the limit for viewership. And we are talking uh, the state of hockey. But then things kind of take a turn. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Birdo and Coconut Head, I don't know what those last two are. But I guess it's your late round picks, so have at it. Yeah, I mean, seat fillers, I guess, or roster fillers. Uh, Coconut Head is uh from Ned's Declassified Survival Guide, just a guy with a bowl a kid with a bowl cut, so that's not gonna help. Uh and then Birdo is let's see here. Uh Birdo is one of your uh, Super Mario characters, the one with the big uh circular mouth. Oh the pink one. Yeah, so, no. uh, yeah that's not really gonna help with uh stuff and Fox. Okay. On to the Predators. They start with Toe Mater, the oh, Mater. Uh, the Cars character played by Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. But then they get they get hit the uh, they get the main guy from Cars in the second, which is Lightning McQueen. And I mean, when you have two cars on the ice, and then you pair it with Drake and Josh. Yeah, that's kind of a steal, though. They got two two for the price of one pick. Yeah. And we know that seats are going to sell because we have Paul McCartney, which is an instant sellout anywhere. Yeah. Uh, then we have James Murray from the Impractical Jokers. Um, again, not the most athletic uh, guy, but the most athletic of the Impractical Jokers, which is not saying much. That doesn't say we much. Have Phineas of Phineas and Firm, which we're we're talking about a stick figure here, basically. Yeah. But then we have Grimace, and I don't know about you, but, like, Grimace and Gritty. Just imagine the Twitter videos now of what happens when those yeah, two meet up. But We're talking they, a rivalry in the making. But then they have Josh from Blue's Clues. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> but you know what? At least they got the actual... They, they got one of the two actual people in Blue's Clues. Fair. <laughs> All right, on to the St. Louis didn't get the Blues. Box, which they is... didn't get the Blues Clues character. Yeah, they got. They didn't get Cartman, which we know Cartman plays goaltender because he's fat. That's not me being uh, rejecting political correctness. You can go check South Park episodes for that. That's just fact. Um, then we find the Canadian Tire guy. Um, I don't know what a we're creeper. doing with that one. Mm -hmm. We got a creeper. We've got Burt Gummer, which I'm not sure who that is. We uh, also we got have... Denzel Crocker, Walter Again, Walrus, and Batman. So, yeah, Batman's probably a steal. Yeah, that late? Sense that, yeah, in the sense that he probably does the most of anyone on this roster. But Cartman is your solidified. Like, I don't blame them for taking Cartman first. That's a goaltender if there ever was one. Right. The only question here is, are you getting child Cartman or are you going to get a grown-up Cartman? Because a grown-up Cartman, we're talking a guy who's going to be a balloon in front of the net. Uh, 
child Cartman probably doesn't translate to the real world's 10 by 6 uh, goaltending frame, so. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know how the rest of those are, are going to, like, do you really want something that's going to explode on your, on the ice? I mean, if there's, a, look, no, you don't, but a puck is going to do that more than any other sport equipment is other than, I don't know, somebody with a helmet on Fair. in football that's just going for your head. Like, right. yeah, I don't know. All right, on to the Winnipeg Jets. They start with Happy Gilmore. On yeah, to so Michael Scott. Happy Gilmore. Well, okay, we, we have to break this down a little. Happy Gilmore, we, uh, a guy who wants to play hockey, he goes, plays golf with a Bruins jersey on, and he plays golf because of his mediocre skating skills. So we know what he can do. He's got a big clapper. He's going to beat... Uh, uh, yeah, but can he with... can he go up and down, right? Up and down the ice? Like, can he get it there in time to set up for his clapper? I don't know, but, you know, he may not have to because we've got Michael Scott here, too. Also, somebody who has a bit of a hockey background. And, you know, we're looking at maybe the best solidified center group here. Uh, we do have Diane Keaton, which uh, that's going to be a little bit tough. You know, God rest her soul. I'm pretty sure she's not with us anymore. Um, we have Baggles, who is, I, I mean, do you know who Baggles is? No. Nope. Baggles is just a garbage bag filled, uh, uh, yeah, filled garbage bag from iCarly with a smiley face on it. So that's going to be not great. Um, and also, let's see here. Oh, breaking news, Diane Keaton, not dead, so forgive me for that. Um, Morty Smith um, comes in next. Morty Smith of Rick and Morty. Now, that that's going to sting a little bit right now because they did lose the guy who does the voice. Um, yeah. Just recently. Um, and then we have, the Cleveland yeah, uh, Brown, mm -hmm. uh, Hugh Neutron, Rydon and Bob, Bob Belcher. Belcher. So, so Rydon, I think, yeah. Rydon's the goalie because oh, yeah. just a giant rock. Yeah, rock type Pokemon. You absolutely have to think that. Uh, then Bob Baggles Belcher, is kind of useless. Yeah, Baggles is useless. Although I could see a filled up garbage bag, not an empty garbage bag, but a filled up garbage bag. Let's say we fill them with cement. Could be the backup goaltender. Um, Fair. Mobility, but like... You yeah, know, how are you going to get the back <laughs> on the ice? They're like the Sedins. <laughs> <laughs> we get two of them. We call them the Sedins, and they just both play at the same time. Take away the lower uh, two-thirds like Matt Murray used to. <laughs> um, Bob Belcher, I mean, if we're ever talking about a guy with a lack of motivation, it's the guy from Bob's Burgers. So I'm not sure here. There's a lot of ambition there. There's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it is the best assembled hockey team and the biggest potential right? Uh, so far. Um, well, So let's take a look at the, the uh, Pacific. Right. So starting off with the Ducks drafting Baby Luigi first. I mean, we already went through this with Baby Mario. We don't think like Baby Mario is a good choice last, let alone first equivalent right? right but then again you know trevor zegers is a very good player but at the same time you can't really win with how he plays so yeah and then we have what's the difference <laughs> rob gronkowski will smith okay. squidward and danny devito um it's an interesting group for sure yeah i mean, I mean the the only one out of there is like gronk Who's athletic? Okay, athletic for sure. Um, Will Smith, athletic in his younger days, but I mean that's just a bag full of laundry as far as concerned with drama right now. Like you never yeah. know which side of Will Smith you're gonna get anymore. Also, I'm not a big fan of having the Scientologist angle in the locker room. That's gonna divide everybody just as much as Squidward is. Um. But Danny DeVito, I mean, if there is ever a glue guy, that's Danny DeVito. 
Right. Uh, but um, I don't see much coming out of these picks. So no, on to the Calgary Flames. We got Bugs Bunny, Bowser, Steve from Minecraft, Vince, Adult Tom Man, from... uh, and then we have Tom from Tom, Tom, from and, Tom Jerry. and Jerry, Bob, the Tomato, the tomato. Paul McCree, and Paul Pogba. Okay, so with Pogba here, we have another athlete, which is the good news. Well, then we have the elusive, elusiveness of Bugs Bunny, which is even better uh, to stack with the elusiveness of Tom and Jerry. But what I don't see here is gaining the blue line correct. Right. But we, okay, so running. the Bowser is the goalie then, because he'll just, like, not move. I would assume. Yeah, so I mean, like, if they don't get scored on because they have some giant shell that's basically blocking the whole net, wouldn't that be just as effective? Yeah, I mean, it's the Islanders approach. <laughs> Fair. All right, on to the Oilers. We have Foghorn Leghorn, Rick Astley, great, Barney Still Stinson, uh, Glenn Quagmire, uh -huh. Brian Quinn, Q, uh, hand, uh, Handsome Squidward, Cole Phelps, and Vincent Chase. Okay, so we have Vincent Chase and Handsome Squidward, by far the most attractive uh, and highly confident players in this uh, organization. Uh, then you uh, pair that with the Casual sex encounters that are pursued by both Barney Stinson and Glenn Quagmire. And we're looking at um, the potential to be highly productive in a non-hockey capacity. Uh, uh, then you have Rick Astley. So, yeah, you do. Rick Astley will keep everybody entertained. But I'm looking at the leadership of Foghorn Leghorn. We're, we're talking about a guy who's very confident takes everybody under their wing in a way where even though he's very much wrong about a lot of things, he speaks to the group with an intensity and a confidence that allow you to think that he is always right. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, uh, the only thing we're going to have to worry about with him is, is it politically correct in this day and age to be able to say, quote, I say boy. Uh, over and over again, that could get a little bit dicey, and that could be a PR uh, disaster issue. Yeah. Mm. All right, on to the San Jose, uh, no, Los, Los Angeles, Angeles King. Kings. We have Major Asshole again from Spaceballs. The Major Asshole. Um, we have Squilliam Fancy Son again, another version of Squidward, I guess. We have Steve from Blues Clues. So we know at some points he's like. Um, Joe Thornton, he's going to stay for a long time, then we're going to see him right. leave. Then we have um, Johnny Bravo, Dale okay. Earnhardt Jr., and Jake from State Farm. Uh, getting in some pretty good advertising money, I'm assuming, then? Oh, yeah. Between Earnhardt and uh, Jake from State Farm, we're, we're looking, and patch money in today's NHL, we're talking sponsors galore. The right. problem is here, what can we actually do with uh, a you squid, can't. yeah. Other than throw it on the ice in Detroit, yeah. Um, Steve from Blue's Clues, I mean, uh, again, a, a nice piece, good for fanfare, but there's not a lot here. Johnny Bravo has the muscles to get it done, but doesn't have the skills. We know that in his ability to fail in every endeavor he's ever put himself in. So right. this one's going to be tough. This is true L.A. Kings of the past 10 years. Yeah. Okay. On to San Jose. They have Ned Flanders, Bender, Honky, the Barclays Center car. Great. Mm -hmm. Donkey from Shrek. <laughs> Jimmy uh -huh. Neutron. Thanos. Oh, God. Uh, the Wii character, Matt. And Regina George. Uh, I just want to start by saying, how is a donkey going to balance on four skates? Uh... No, that donkey couldn't really balance on the ground much either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How's the donkey going to balance on four skates? Uh, Thanos, um, does he have the stones? You, you got to hope that if anybody does it, Tim. Because I don't see a net front presence here, other than maybe the Barclay Center card. Yeah, but, but if he, if he has all of the Infinity Stones, it's over. He just wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, Flanders is controversial here. I feel like he, he belongs more in the player development coaching, uh, maybe even a team counselor, but yeah, no, this one's interesting to put on the ice. Yeah, and you got a Wii character who literally just plays games all day through two Wii Sports, I guess. Yeah, no real uh, no real joints there either. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we'll see. On to we the... do have the, yeah, the Kraken who have one of the few actual hockey players here. They have Doug Glatt. Um, but but I again, mean, hold on. You say one of the few actual hockey players, but doesn't Phil Kessel consume enough hot dogs that a hot dog is an actual hockey player now, too? That's a fair point. Uh, you know, but I was actually going to compare Doug Glatt to Matt Cook and hope that, you know, Matt Cook would be a ceiling because Matt Cook could, uh, you know, sometimes score. But let's let's be real. He was there for non-scoring purposes. Mm -hmm. Um. You have Red Foreman from that 70s show, which is a nice touch. You have the science of Dr. Emmett Brown from Back to the Future. It's we Sandy do have Cheeks. Phil Kessel on this team in the form of a hot dog. Uh, and then we finish off with Elmer Fudd. And Sandy Cheeks. Yes. Uh, so this one's interesting. I feel like this is a team that doesn't finish in last place. Uh, playoff potential compared to some of the other rosters. Uh, and how bad they've been, but like this is not my top cup contender. I think no way. Right now, Winnipeg is my top cup contender. Uh -huh. All right, and then the Canucks. They have Stewie Griffin, the Cookie Monster, Dennis System from Always Sunny, Mega Mind. Isn't even a real person. It's just an actual system. Yeah. Uh, some Schnitzel. Sorry, it's not a hot dog. Not counts. It doesn't count as a hockey player. Gary the Snail, and a puppy. Well, they have Team Morale at an all-time high. Yes, and th this is all-time for a child. Um, but th there's very limited upside here. This is no. a basement team, if there ever was one. Yep. Dewey can be as smart as he wants to be, but, like, let's just say what it is. This team is very limited in potential. Right. You know, Megamind is probably your best player. Uh, Gary the Snail is an absolute liability. Uh, we, we basically have a pie, not even a pie chart, but like a lined, uh, pro cons list in the Dennis system here. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you throw a whiteboard on the ice and see if you get any goals. Um, Cookie Monster, I, I hear he's eating healthier now, but you know, again, I, I think we're going to have trouble getting him in skates. Um, right. so this one, this one is a, a bottom dweller yeah. for me. All right. On the last team, we got Vegas. They started with a 2005 Toyota Sienna. I feel like that's just the yeah. worst version of any of Car's car. Uh, Duke Nukem. Leonardo from T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, Springtrap. Giga Chad and Mickey Mouse. I'm going to let you take this one here. I, I'm of the opinion that, again, it's it's not a bad team. No, this one actually has, like usable pieces i think you know like uh like leonardo can't be that like leonardo has to be some good obi-wan kenobi has the force so even if he can't balance he can use the force to balance mm -hmm. uh mickey mouse they always have disney on ice so mickey mouse should be able to skate too that's a good point i didn't even think of that but i uh, look they treated Marc Andre Fleury like a, a 2005 Toyota Sienna, so this is nothing new. Yeah, but um, also like a 2005 Toyota Sienna is just a worse version of like Lightning McQueen and all the other cars. Yes, but we're talking huge mass. We're talking the absolute brick wall. Aside from the one character that was uh, the Oculate, I believe, who was literally a brick wall. Um, so, I mean, we're talking park that thing in front of the net and you you don't need a 2005 sienna to drive you need it to be stationary <laughs> yeah and that's exactly what this dumpster pile can do um right so yeah um uh, i don't know i who, think they have your, useful you, pieces they could be pretty good who's your cup champion here i know this is a lot to take in uh i mean if we go back to where was when it happy gilmore and michael scott happy gilmore and michael scott over here yeah the these guys uh, winnipeg is probably it 
but Vegas should uh, make the playoffs, like, and make it quite far in the like good enough in the playoffs. I think. I would agree with that. Um, it, this has been wildly entertaining. Again, thank you to um, that Twitter user um, who I, I need to find again. Um, R Y B R Z. Yes, uh, R Y B R Z. Um, for allowing us to take some of his uh, his content, and uh, even though it was automated, and let us do some some fun stuff with it. Um, so yeah, we'll have to make sure that we uh, throw him into uh, the announcement when this goes up, at least on Twitter. Yeah. All right, and on to some actual NHL. We are looking at the All Star Game in South Florida. Let's play some ice hockey in South Florida. Great idea. Yeah. Um, I love how the NHL just keeps taking the All Star Game to places where like tourism will go up from people who actually live in colder climates, but they'll never bring the All Star Game to a place where it actually makes sense. Let's put it in San Jose. Let's put it in uh Tampa Bay. Let's put it in Sunrise, Florida. We know what these places are all really good at is not being hockey places. Last year was LA. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, let's just go through the teams the and let's just talk about like ones we didn't expect, but I'm pretty sure we expected most of these. Um, yeah. I mean, hockey all stars are like the the simplest thing to predict. Yeah. Uh, because by rule, they take a guy from each team and it doesn't take a lot of research to figure out who that guy is going to be. No. Normally it's just the statistical leader in points. Um so yeah. yeah. So we have uh Sidney Crosby from Pittsburgh, no surprise there. Johnny Gaudreau from Columbus, no surprise there. Kevin Hayes from Philly. Uh I don't think we had a definite of who was coming out of Philly at the beginning of the season, but not surprising if you look at how Philly's doing. Uh, Jack Hughes again. He's on the biggest contract of Philly. Yeah, Jack Hughes. Uh, uh, no surprise there. Brock Nelson also again. Uh, mm-hmm. Ovechkin again. <laughs> Sveshnikov. Um, again. Yeah, and then Shesterkin. I mean, he's he's the name brand guy for Carolina. Yeah, yeah, and then Shesterkin, which again, <laughs> basically keeping them yeah. afloat. I mean, Shesterkin's their best player, yeah. which is crazy with how much money they've spent on Panarin and all those other guys on the offensive side. Yeah, and then for the Atlantic, we have Kucherov, Larkin, Mitch Marner, Suzuki, Tage Thompson, Kachuk, Kachuk, both of them, uh, and Olmark. Uh, the only one that like nobody would have expected, I guess, at the beginning would have been Olmark. I think you would have expected an offensive threat from Boston more so than the goalie. But like, yeah, as of now, like you also, knew he was getting the picked. Fastest goaltender to reach like twenty five wins in a season. Yeah, which is crazy because he wasn't even supposed to be the number one guy going into the year. Yep, exactly. Which is why I'm like, this is the only kind of like surprise if you're looking at the beginning of the year to now. I, I will say some slight surprise here when we're talking the initial rosters coming out. Austin Matthews wasn't on it. It was Marner instead. But, but uh, Marner is doing better, right? Yeah, but Matthews is arguably, aside from McDavid, right now, this current version of the NHL's poster boy. Fair. Okay. Right. Yeah, fair. Anyway, on to the central. We have uh, Kaprasov. Keller from oh, Arizona. Kaprizov. Kaprizov? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, not the same. Uh, Robertson. Uh, Tarasenko. Robertson. Mm-hmm. Seth Jones, which uh, I like. Chicago's just a jump dumpster fire, so like I couldn't care who they were sending. Cal McCarr, uh, Morrissey, and UC Saros. Now, what pops out to me here is um, Tarasenko being back in all-star form. Because, yeah, he's only 31, but, like, it's been a while since that guy was really playing anywhere near an all-star level. He's only a two-time all-star. I'm looking it up here. Um, Let's see if I can find out when the last year was. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's three all-star games, two-time all-star. That makes no sense. Hockey reference got to jump on that. He hasn't made an all-star team since 2017. 
Fair. A long time. Six years between All Star appearances after being a three time in a row All Star is a long time to fall off. Fair. But I, I don't uh, know. Like, bones. none of these are surprising, except for the fact that Chicago gets to send Morrissey. somebody. Josh Morrissey. I mean, I guess I, I don't know who else you would send for Winnipeg. Um, exactly. All right, on to the Pacific, which has Connor McDavid, like you were saying. Yeah. Uh, oh, never mind. ESPN told me he had zero goals on the season. That's why that's wrong. Yeah. Uh, so the Pacific has Fiala, Kadri, McDavid, Pedersen, Terry, Carlson. Uh, what's the first guy? Matty Beniers? Beniers. Beniers and Logan Thompson. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, really know what to make of this. I feel like this is the weakest division outside of McDavid running the show. Yeah, but Air it's also it's three on three. Good. So is it really the weakest division? Yes, but we're talking you actually have to be able to put out a few lines here. <laughs> and aside from Kadri, McDavid, and Pedersen, and uh, Carlson on the first line of three on three, it's a massive talent drop off after that. But I mean, like yeah, Fiala Pedersen, like, Fiala Pedersen is okay, and then I I see what you're saying. It's okay. It's nowhere near what the first line is. Yeah. All right. On to the best part: the fan vote. So if you are a Metro fan, you can vote for Artemi Panarin. No, no, it's already gone. It's already oh, done. I know. These are the guys oh. who got in off of the fan. Oh, vote. these wait. People voted for Panarin, Fox, and Sorokin. What was? Huh? Oh, okay. Out of all of this, Pasternak makes it. Yes. Austin Matthews makes it for a fan vote. Yes. Vasilevsky should, like, yes. Yes. The Atlantic by far was the most like. It was more surprising that these guys weren't already there. Yeah. <laughs> like that was the biggest no brainer. And I will say, you know, going back to the Metro. This is a thing where the NHL and the teams don't do a good job because the teams, unlike in the MLB, where in MLB fan vote, there's like five guys that they put in a pool and there's like, pick somebody from this pool of five guys. Each NHL team, because I know from the Penguin Twitter, was like, here's five guys from our team, vote for them. It was like, okay, so this is a clusterfuck. Because every team is basically just going to vote for their five guys. And yeah. so basically the team with the most media market like interactivity on social media Which, win. And for the Metro it. is always New York. Yes. So. And New York was reflected as such. Because <laughs> uh, otherwise, like, I don't know. Would I really want to uh, vote for Panarin, Fox, and Sorokin? No. Uh, okay, Central. Hellebuck. Okay, McKinnon and Rontanen. Okay, I mean, sure. Again, McKinnon should have been there anyway. But this is the flaw with uh, we get one representative per team system. Yeah, uh, so I, I guess. But also, I'm pretty sure that leaves the central with, like, no defense. Oh, no, they have a lot of defense. Uh, Seth Jones, no. Joe McCarr. And Morrissey. Oh, uh, yeah. But the Atlantic, no defense. Kutrov, yeah, Larkin, that, Marner, that Suzuki, Thompson, Kachuk, Kachuk is all forwards. And then Matthews, Poster, not forwards. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. But, you know, basically most teams play a, a, a fourth forward as a defenseman on the power play anyway. So it's three on three. It's more aligned to power play kind of play than it is to regular. Yeah. We'll see. But, like, it kind of sucks how no defenseman made it in the Atlantic at all. Like, are they all that bad? I mean, kind of, other than McAvoy. Yeah, who no. Um, All right, and, and from the Pacific, we have Dreisaitl, Horvat, and Skinner. Uh, Dreisaitl... The real flaw here is a second Canuck being in the All-Star game. Uh, Horvat's going to win the fan vote all the time. I'm not surprised. That's really a shame. Well, if he was going to win the fan vote, he should have been not in the fan vote category. He should have just been a regular All-Star vote based on voting. Fair. All right, on to the... 
NFL for a quick thing, right? It's the championship weekend. Playoffs, yeah. So we have the Bengals, Chiefs, and the Cowboys. Eagles? Oh, 49ers. 49ers, Eagles. Eagles. Bengals and Chiefs. Yeah, I was like, wait. Closer to the top. Closer to the top on the graphic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am reading. You have the... We have the wrong name in our graphic. I didn't I didn't put that in the graphic. Oh. Gamecovers.com. A oh. gambling company that apparently doesn't specialize in reading. <laughs> yeah, it says it has the San Francisco logo but the that. Cowboys name. I'll let them come after me for that. That's their own fault. We want you to take down our graphic. Well then spell the fucking names right. Yeah, so it's the 49ers, Eagles, and Chiefs, Bengals. Uh, what do you think on the AFC game? Oh, boy. Um, I don't know. I feel like the Chiefs, even with Mahomes' injury, yeah, they, they see, the fact that the uh, Bengals went through the Bills, like, the Bills didn't seem ready, and I feel like no. at some point the Bengals won't be ready. It's not just me being a Steelers fan saying that, like, I can never see – the Bengals winning a Super Bowl because after last year, I don't know. It's more just, I mean, the Chiefs don't even fucking run the ball. And even good teams defensively still can't stop them from scoring 30 points a game. Right. So, like, what do you, how can you stop a team that chooses to be one dimensional and still succeeds? Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I still think the Chiefs. Chiefs have an edge in this game, so I'll go with them too. All I, right. I do think, ironically, the the bigger toss up is the 49ers. And Eagles. Yeah, aside from me not wanting the Eagles to win, uh, it is pretty much a toss up. I think. Yeah, I think that the Eagles probably boast the most talent and have made the most moves to solidify depth. But mm-hmm. the 49ers are the number one defense, and the fact of the matter is didn't matter who was at quarterback they were still scoring so like i think this is of of the two games here i'm more inclined to think that this is an offensive shootout despite the fact that the 49ers defense is more built to slow it down than the chiefs Bengals game right yeah so i mean if the it goes the way i think it does for the afc then the chiefs are in and if it goes the way i want for the nfc then it's chiefs and 49ers for the bowl. All right, you got anything else? No, oh, this was a lot of fun. Um, so, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun with this one. I yeah. knew this was going to be fun when I found the bot. Um, if there's any other bot accounts that come out in the future that allows us to do something like this, Granted, not the same fictional characters, because, you know, yep. it's more funny when you see it from the first time. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, I had a lot of fun with this one. I knew, like I said, I knew from months ago that this was going to be something, even if we stored it, we had to come back to this. Oh, yeah, definitely. I didn't think the content was going to be so easy and the jokes would write themselves as easily in the in the moment as they did. But that's yep. what made it even better. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in and catch you next time.